So we will continue with the airline industry. We started in the previous module. We discussed about uh, air transportation, the introductory parts. Today we will be having a discussion about airline industry in more detail. We know what is an airline. Airline is uh, it's a commercial organization. It is the most important element and the most visible player in the aviation sector. Dear students, uh, the learning objectives of, of this particular module is one is to elucidate the concept and characteristics of airline industry, uh, then to describe the airline product and consumers, to distinguish between different types of commercial air transport and airline services, to explain new business models in airlines, and to introduce various aspects of airline alliances. These are the learning objectives, uh, learning outcomes as far as this particular unit is concerned. It is involved in the commercial transport services for the public. They undertake services for the people as well as for the cargo. It is now one of the largest industries serving billions of customers annually. Approximately 3.7 billion passengers use the services of commercial airlines every year. The number may increase or decrease. Because of Corona, the number may be less. The number is much less now. Till until last year, it has been growing consistently. It is expected to continue its growth in the years to come as well. So the purpose, the basic function of airline is to provide the services of transportation for the passengers, cargo and baggage from one point to another for a set of prices. So that is the reason we call it as a commercial organization. Airline and tourism has a lot of importance. Both are interconnected. Tourism has so much of dependency on airlines for its surveying. Particularly in the international tourism, they are depending very much on airlines for the surveillance. Any issue in the airline industry can seriously affect the tourism industry world over. It, it is certainly, uh, as per the latest statistics of World Tourism Organization, internationally uh, tourists, they prefer to use air transportation for reaching the destination and to return to their place. So, they have a very important role in the tourism world over. Apart from commercial airlines with the regular services, tourism is benefited by the services of non-regular airlines as well. For example, charter airlines. Charter airlines have a lot of significance in tourism. Large-scale tour operators make use of charter services. They depend on charter airlines for the conduct of package holidays even in the long haul routes. Some of the regular scheduled airlines have on charter services as well. So airlines, even if it is a full service carrier or low cost carrier, if it is a major airline, they may be having their some, some of the operators, they will be having their own charter airlines as well. There are some other companies, they have only charter airlines. Of late, both business travel as well as leisure travel depends on scheduled airline services greatly. Charter airlines had a history, particularly during the 1950s and 60s and 70s. Package tourism, international tourism depended too much on charter airlines. Later on, commercial transportation began more affordable, particularly after the deregulation. The deregulation we discussed in the previous uh, module. The deregulation that was the beginning of privatization in airline industry that was begun in uh, uh, USA and it continued into other regions of the world and that became very significant in air transportation and other places also started to have uh, uh, air transportation as a serious mode of transport, important mode of transportation. So tourism got greatly benefited by air transportation and uh, the changes happened in airlines was a prime reason in the case of the affordability of air transportation as well as in the case of uh, its spread across the world. 
it, uh, it has become a global industry. Efficiency of airline operation, particularly its punctuality uh, of services and its quality is very relevant in the case of tourism. So airlines and tourism do have so much of importance. They are interconnected, interrelated and they are mutual complementary in nature. They have a symbiotic relationship. If there is an issue in one sector, the other sector will also be affected. If one sector is increasing, certainly it will be having its own waves in the other sector as well. So this kind of relationship is existing between tourism and airline industry. We nowadays call airline as an industry. Why we call it as an industry? We need to look at it. Airline represents an organization. It's a commercial organization. It's a business organization. But airline altogether can be called as an industry. Then we have to think why we call it as an industry. An industry, we know that according to definitions, according to the concept of industry, an industry consists of a number of competing firms that are having similar products. And airlines too form an industry because they provide services for people who intend to travel or send consignments from one place to another in air mode of transport in an efficient manner. That is the reason we call it as an industry. So airlines, the products are almost similar and they are having same kind of similar characteristics. Many of the characteristics are same. So we call it as an industry. An industry is an industry which consists of a vast network of routes that connect cities in different parts of the country or even the world. That is, that is, that is why we call it as a global industry. Because that this industry has operations across the world, every nook and corner of the world. And it's conducting services over the network of a large number of airlines, they carry passengers and cargo on scheduled services. There are unscheduled services as well. Now, let us understand the characteristics of airline industry in general. We know that airline industry is a service industry. So you may understand, you may ask me what is service industry. Service industry is something, they have the product uh, which are having the characteristics like intangibility, inseparability, perishability, etc. Intangibility means the products are in fact untouchable, cannot be seen. In fact, those products have to be felt to be experienced. Tourism, transportation, etc. are intangible products because we are not selling we are not consuming any physical product. We are just having an experience. In the airline industry, the experience connected to intangibility is being transported from one place to another. That is why we call it as an intangible industry. We cannot see a physical product in airline industry. Rather, we get a kind of experience. We can get a kind of feel of moving from one place to another. Inseparability means the consumer is part of the production system. If the consumer is absent, the production is not taking place. So, in order to produce the product, the consumer has to reach to the uh, place where the, where the product is going to be uh, generated. So, once the consumer reaches, the product will be generated. So, the production and consumption cannot be separated. The consumer cannot be separated from the production system. That is why we call it as inseparable product. So for airline industry, if it is it is inseparable because the, uh, the the passenger has to reach to the airport to consume the product, then only that product is generated. And it is perishable as well. If there is a service on today, then if you want to consume it, it has to be consumed today itself. Tomorrow another product is being sold. So today's product cannot be sold tomorrow. We cannot maintain, we cannot store this product for a future sale. That is why we call it as perishable. Perishable represent no, it is dying very fast. The product will be extinct. Product will be losing its uh, period of uh, usage after some time. It has a uh, time uh, constraint. It's a time bound one. Then L industry uh, is uh, having lot of high barriers. Barriers of entry is very high. Barriers of exit is also very high. A barrier of entry means if you want to start a new business, 
you have to pass through a so much of difficulties there are lot of hindrances lot of difficulties to start a new business at the same time it is also difficult for an airline industry to exit from the business we know the case of uh, uh, kingfisher airline jet airways and all still the exit is not complete because there are so many procedures to be completed so many difficulties are there even for exiting from the business many other sectors if you don't want to continue the business you can close it immediately you may have to uh, clear all the debts and other thing that is a different issue but other kind of difficulties and uh, problems are not there and high if barriers of entry is there then the difficulties the hindrances to start the business is so much for starting an airline business you need to have you need to have lot of licenses a uh, lot of certificates not lot of income requirement is there capital intensive industry so many things are there as i said uh, airline is a capital intensive sector lot of investment is required if you want to purchase uh, one aircraft you need thousands of crores of rupees so with one aircraft you cannot start a business you need to have lot of other uh, infrastructure as well so asset requirement is so high in the case of airline industry this highly capital intensive so it is not easy for the people to start business moreover it's a high cash flow sector every day the cash the uh, money requirement for running the operations is also very high it's a high cash flow sector so for a common businessman it is not it is not easy to start an airline business then airline business is following dynamic pricing nowadays we know that if you want to book a flight ticket when we search for you know the price of the seat we will come to know that today morning the price may be one in the afternoon the price may be different in the night again the price may be different so the prices will be varying a dynamism can be observed in the case of pricing so it's a kind of principle they follow and they follow this principle with the help of revenue management practices so dynamic pricing strategy is followed by airline industry Uh, their their profit is depending upon this dynamic pricing strategy airline is a oligopolistic sector oligopolistic there are two terms quite often we use one is monopoly and other one is oligopoly when a market is having monopoly it means there is only one player they are dominating they are the uh, only player they are there because once upon a time in in, in indian uh, airline in in air transport sector we had only air india and in the domestic sector we had only indian airlines so uh, that time it was monopolistic now there are few companies uh, they are dominating the uh, market that is why we call it as oligopolistic so airline sector is a oligopolistic sector another important thing is that airline sector is highly regulated sector no other sector is having this much of control by the authorities and other kind of agencies lot of licenses are required frequent monitoring is there uh, you need to adhere to so many rules and regulations at the national level international level so regulations in order to control basically all these regulations are done for the smooth and safe and uh, uh, very careful uh, with lot of security measures they are undertaking all these for these purposes airline is a labor intensive sector because so much of employment opportunities are there the requirement for people to undertake services in the airline sector is very high they need employees at the airport they need employees within the flight they need employees within the office everywhere they need employees so number of employees requirement is very high so that is why we call it as a labor intensive sector moreover regarding the expenses two things are very important the cost for maintaining labor the employees so is so high the salary for uh, every employee is uh, uh, really high moreover the fuel expenses it is also uh, very high so these two are the dominant cost elements in the cost of uh, airline businesses it's a highly competitive sector airlines are facing lot of competition once uh, one airline is having stiff very difficult competition very high competition with other airlines even if it is oligopoly only few airlines are there lot of competition is there intense competition is there within the market moreover airline sector is having another very important feature it is called thin profit margin 
the profit level that is for airline sector is so so less we cannot make that much of profit that is why many of the airlines are closing their businesses in between so profit margin is very small so that is a big problem for the company world over it's a major issue it's not in india but across the world everywhere it's a major issue that is the reason many airlines are closing and lot of consolidation is taking place mergers takeover acquisition everything is taking place moreover government control government regulations are closed government regulations are there and also seasonality is an important thing we know that peak season and off season are there. in the high season they go for very high price and that is only source for them to make some profit and in the off season they have to slash they have to reduce their price so seasonality will be affecting the demand patterns in high season demand will be very high off season demand will be less and who are the consumers of airlines and what do you mean the consumer the consumer is actually who is doing the real consumption of the product as far as airlines are concerned there are different consumers one major group is tourist another group is other kinds of travelers we call it as in general we call it as passengers so passengers consists of tourists and other types of travelers plus other consumers of uh, airlines are cargo uh, senders there are some people those who want to send cargo from one place to another and they send by air cargo so but when it is sent by air cargo so naturally they consume the, uh, consume the services of airlines so those people are also part of uh, uh, airline uh, industry so tourists are actually a major uh, market major consumer group for the airlines other travelers are also there with a significant share in in the airline demand among the tourists leisure tourists and that is the largest category leisure tourists means those who travel for the purpose of pleasure recreation uh, visiting places visiting friends and relatives and sort of things other category is business traveler there are you know business since globalization the number of business travelers has been increasing um, you know so many people are traveling from one place to another especially the business executives managers and, and the top level employees they, uh, they they travel to different places for for participating in meetings conferences conventions and also part of incentive tours incentive holiday packages and all people are traveling so these are all part of the business travel the, the customers of airlines also include as i said they the uh, those that include the people who send consignments like car mail transportation is another major activity mail transportation means postal services mail services postal services is another important sector they are also part of the airline consumption they are also the consumers so what is an airline product the product is basically they sell air transport services they sell air transportation service between two or more cities at a certain price with specified purchase requirements and restrictions they sell transportation service for cargo operators and consignees the core product of airline is basically the transportation of passengers and cargo from one place to another ancillary products and complementary products are also there in flight services it is in fact whatever the services we provide while the flight is flying when the passengers are inside the aircraft Uh, the service the food service the entertainment service all sort of services that we provide uh, while on board we call it as in flight services and these can add value to the core product of airline commercial air transport op- operation is the most visible player as we said airline is part of commercial air transportation it is basically an aircraft operation involving transport of passengers cargo or mail for remuneration or for hire airlines are organizations that undertake commercial air transportation it can be usually classified generally classified into two as scheduled air transportation and non scheduled air transportation scheduled air transportation provide air transport services based on a fixed preset uh, schedule or a uh, or a timetable this is usually published published to them they may be publishing the schedule in their uh, in their websites through other media through other you know sources they will be publishing the schedules 
Whereas non schedule operations, the airlines they conduct operations as and when required the services. They undertake services without any prefix timetable. Such kind of operation operators we call it as non schedule operators. Schedule transportation uh, both international and domestic are there. A scheduled international air service is a series of flights that possesses all the following certain kind of characteristics. Let us understand what are the characteristics. It passes through the airspace or the territory of more than one state. If an Indian airline is undertaking international air transport services, that means the airline from this country will be passing through the uh, uh, airspace, airspace of another country. It is performed by aircraft for the transport of passengers, mail or cargo for remuneration in such a manner that each flight is often used by members of the public. The common people can access the services of uh, scheduled transportation. It is operated so as to serve traffic between same two or more points either in according to published timetable or with flights so regular or frequent that they constitute a recognizably systematic series. Non schedule airlines are actually the airlines that may not be having a published timetable that will come to the details of it in the plane later. The schedule and non schedule airlines, apart from those, there are some other types of classification is also there. Uh, major airline is one type of terminology quite often we come across in the, in the air, air transport literature. Major airlines are actually uh, the trunk airlines and they concentrate on long distance routes and they serve, operate services between major cities within the country and from this country to from uh, one country to outside as well. So for example Air India is a major airline. Uh, Emirates is a major airline, Etihad is a major airline. So their focus of services is between two major cities. A regional airline is another kind of airline we, we have in the air, air transportation sector. There are certified airlines which provide regular scheduled passengers of cargo on particular regions. So they, they may not be having a national uh, kind of service or international services. Commuter airlines are there. Uh, they are a kind of small uh, airline. Uh, it's a kind of uh, region airline, in fact, and they, they, their route may be having of distance of 400 miles or less only. Th they are very small operators. They are a type of regional airlines actually. National airlines are there. National airlines usually operate services within the boundaries of a country, though they may fly on international routes as well. Flag carrier is a term that has been using since the beginning of airline industry. Flag carrier is usually the airline that is owned by the government. These are the airlines owned by the government and operate services mainly on international routes. For instance, as far as India is concerned, Air India is a flag carrier. Another terminology is full service carrier and low cost carrier, also called low cost airline. Full service carrier means they offer all the services that are supposed to be offered as part of international air transport, uh, international air transportation. They are also called full service airlines. They are also called legacy airlines. These airlines offer full basket services to passengers. The in-flight services will be complete and their price will be uh, 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 high compared to other types of airlines. High in the sense uh, they provide all the services they provide all, uh, you know, the number of uh, employees will be more, number of in-flight staff will be more. So naturally, their expenses will also be more. Because, uh, the, the service level will be much more than the low-cost carriers and others. Whereas the second category, low-cost carrier, it's also called, uh, in short, we call it as LCC or low-cost airline, LCAs. These are actually, uh, no, it is also called no free airlines and they undertake services with low fare. So many airlines in India, we can identify full service carrier. Air India is a full service carrier, whereas uh, SpiceJet is a low cost carrier. Their fare structure is low compared to full service carrier. So naturally, their services level, service levels will also be uh, lesser and they don't provide free of cost the food and other services within the flight. So if you want to have food, we need to purchase. 
So that is how they manage their uh, business. The features of LCC compared to FSC, they operate point-to-point -point services and usually on shorter haul routes. Point-to-point -point service from means from one city to the next city and they return to, back to the previous city. They don't offer some of the in-flight services like food and beverage. Usually, they use single type of aircraft and employ a less number of employees, staff, compared to full service uh, carriers. Point-to-point -point short route services to get higher crew utilization and lower crew costs. Whereas LCC, it is continued the business uh, the features. It provides only basic in-flight in service with no in-flight catering. They operate with minimal staff, operate with only one type of aircraft. This helps to have uh, safe training costs and also gain through cost savings for spare parts, maintenance, equipment, etc. They sell tickets more on, on online and uh, that is why they save some commission from uh, the selling. Nowadays, hybrid airlines are also there. Hybrid airlines actually stand in between low-cost carriers and full-service carriers. They have the characteristics mix of both. They may have better in-flight services but may not be up to the full-service carriers. So that kind of airlines we call it as hybrid carriers. So in the Asian countries there are many new airlines coming up as hybridization. That is a kind of hybridization of business models in the airline sector. So, how can what kind of dif uh, differences we can identify between LCC and FSC between low cost carrier and full service carrier? Low cost carrier is basically a simple brand, whereas full service carrier is a complex brand. Uh, they provide services for low fare, whereas uh, full service carriers will be following service classes and fare classes. So, in a full service carrier, there will be uh, business class, there can be uh, first class and economy class. So, th two or three kinds of classes are there. But in the case of LCC, there is no difference, only one type of class of service. And airline and call, call center booking is you know, the prominent, the uh, dominant mode of uh, booking of the seats of the LCCs. Whereas full service carrier will be providing all sort of channels for selling their tickets. They have a very simple fare structure LCCs. Whereas full service carriers have multiple products and they may focus on very complex fare structure different types of fares uh, uh, are offered by the full service carriers they focus on uh, lccs focus on secondary airports with multiple bases whereas full service carriers will be having hubs and the focus of will be at a hub airport and from there they undertake the services in the case of uh, low cost carrier aircraft utilization is very high Whereas full service carrier aircraft utilization is lower comparatively. There is no interlining agreements, co chair agreements by the LCC carriers, whereas uh, full service, service carriers have co chairing, interlining agreements, and bilateral and multilateral alliances are possible. We will come to the, the we will uh, we'll pass through the alliances later. They offer, LCC offer a basic transportation or LCs ancillary extra. If you want to have those services, we need to pay for that. Whereas full service carriers, they have a complex and integrated or a multiple uh, bundled uh, product system they offer. The focus of low cost, low cost carriers is sh uh, short haul, whereas uh, full service carriers, they focus on short haul, long haul, as well as on medium haul and it's, uh, it undertakes services on multi-sector routes as well. Very complex fleet structure and route type structure is also complex. That is, a, those, that is a feature of full service carrier. non scheduled airlines, they perform commercial air transport services without a prefix or a published timetable. A charter flight is a non scheduled operation using a chartered aircraft the, the, the uh, passenger charter flights are there, cargo charter flights are there, combined passenger cargo flights are there. Non scheduled, non charter flights for the carriage of individually ticketed or individually available traffic is also there uh, uh, at times. On demand taxi services is also available. As I said in the earlier, alliance is very important. Full service carriers will be having alliances. For example, Air India, they, they are part of Star Alliance. These kind of alliances give some kind of uh, advantages for the airlines. 
the focus area of alliance is actually they share they share information technology facilities for the purpose of reservation scheduling fleet planning crew planning etc they share the it services pooling of air services is done by the uh, within the alliances these alliances are formed by a number of airlines uh, they form this this is a kind of cooperation between the airlines in order to help each other so that they can make lot of advantages by this they pool the services between two or more airlines which can help to have a wider choice of frequencies and to maximize load factors pooling of air space uh, air, air, air aircraft spare equipment is also possible the purchase of purchasing of aircraft and equipment is also having a kind of understanding developing of regional airline training centers so that uh, every airline all the airlines within the alliance can have can utilize the, the services of those training centers agreements for aircraft and engine overhaul and maintenance is also there by the airlines involved within the uh, alliances independent fuel service companies they may be establishing so that they can maintain stable fuel supply so that that advantage also can be there for the uh, uh, partners in the airline alliances whereas passengers will be getting some benefit for example if if uh, we are booking tickets through uh, an air, airline which is part of a uh, alliance then you can have a wider you can uh, you can travel uh, on a wider area global access through port share and schedule harmonization is possible with the, uh, for the passengers with the help of alliances seamless travel through coordinated schedules simplified pricing interline e ticketing possibility through check in uh, baggage and uh, seating of uh, uh, through check in seating is also a possible terminal collocation and one point of service contact is there in the case. these are the benefits passengers can be uh, enjoy by being uh, booking if it's a seat that 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 is part of an alliance recognition through frequent flyer the schemes of airlines is also possible launch access and priority handling and boarding is also possible if uh, you are booking a ticket uh, with an airline that is part of an airline alliance um, another benefit is value through low fares simplified round the world fares and all these are possible with the help of uh, airline alliances and in this one let us sum up uh, like this uh, airline is an uh, ever growing industry with peculiar char characteristics along with evolution mergers and acquisitions also take place particularly since industry is featured with a very thin profit margin regular airline services are there with published schedule uh, which are called uh, scheduled services non scheduled services are also there like charter services there are also significance in the realm of international tourism low cost carriers are making waves in the industry as they are very very successful nowadays they have a lot of impact in the tourism sector and of course the new model the hybrid airlines are also gaining significance in international tourism so let us wind up the uh, schedule uh, the module this way